a relative of Danita said he was relieved. Her ex-husband said he was happy. Now, it took less than an hour for the jury to come to the decision that Patrick Elliott had murdered his wife. I'm here at Witham Hospital in Boone County, where command center is set up. You can see the bus behind me, and you can see the officers are uh, congregated together discussing what's happening. We're hoping to have a new update here soon. LPD suggested if you are going Black Friday shopping this year to only bring one credit card with you and to try to leave your purse at home. But if you must carry a purse with you, make sure it's one that securely closes. This is the boulder that sat in Columbian Park for 88 years commemorating the Spanish-American War. But when the boulder was moved from this spot here, nobody was expecting it to be hiding a little piece of history. A battleground man is behind bars after police found multiple drugs and guns in his car. Tippecanoe County Sheriff's deputies arrested 37-year-old Justin Tyson. Five days of searching, five hours of standoff, and now the hunt for a Tippecanoe County rape and kidnapping suspect is over. After nearly a week of searching for Paul Etter, the case came to a close today after Etter took his own life. Is reeling tonight from a fire that tore through five homes and damaged even more. The cause of that fire is still a mystery to investigators tonight. Montgomery County is one of just a handful of Indiana counties that does not have any kind of ordinance about where these large scale livestock operations can be built. The snow is still on the ground as you can see behind me and it's falling from the sky right now. Now, little flurries are falling and the road conditions right now slick and wet. And most people I see driving here on Northwestern Avenue are using caution. Keeping an eye on the water is not the only thing lifeguards are on the lookout for. They're also keeping an eye on the pool decks for sign of heat exhaustion and dehydration. It may be cloudy today, but Mayor Kitchell says the sun is shining down on Logan's Port's housing market. That's because 50 new homes are coming to Logansport. The American Academy of Pediatrics says most energy drinks have the equivalent of three cups of coffee. And some contain ingredients like taurine that have not been tested in children. You know, I'm someone who likes the heat, but I have to say 80 degrees sounds really nice it after. It does feel pretty nice. It feels like is, 110. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and with that lower humidity, it's going to feel quite That'll nice. That'll be great. Perfect. Thanks, Alan. Well, we have a cool story about Rondale Moore coming up. I have a good feeling. Well, you know, when I walked into the station around 2.30, it was hot, yep. muggy, humid. What's it going to be like when I walk out here after the show? It's going to be much cooler. Thanks so much, Ballant. Well, this summer heat did not stop the Greater Lafayette community from coming out for a cause. It may just be a simulation, but this is what an active shooter situation sounds like inside of a school. Okay, you said Frontier High School? The question of the day for staff at Frontier Schools. What is going to be your reaction to what is going on around you? With the help of the Clinton County Sheriff's Office and some volunteer students, local law enforcement recreated the scene for teachers to watch. Chalmers Town Marshal James Davis says it's important for law enforcement and schools to collaborate. It's one of the most important things, um, so that way uh, any first responder that is coming here, we know the schools. Frontier School Corporation Superintendent Dan Seating says he wants his teachers to be prepared. No school in the United States is immune to an active shooter incident. I want to be proactive instead of reactionary. Uh, I think when, when you're reactionary about something like this, uh, it, it's not good. Elements of Alice training were incorporated into the session. It's similar to run, hide, fight techniques. It was also about helping teachers recognize sounds. So that way they can hear what uh, different ammunition and, and, and firearms sound like. Superintendent Seating has a message for parents of students about safety. Uh, we take safety very, very seriously. Um, uh, this is an example of how we're taking uh, safety very seriously. It's really weird, the secrecy around all of it. I don't understand the reason behind it. Secrecy surrounding events that took place nearly 30 years ago. And now Travis Kearney is looking for answers. He followed me home. Uh, he came to my house unannounced. He 
asked my mother if he could take me, who was in fifth grade at the time, and my sister, who was in first grade at the time, on a run. Kearney says his mom had enough common sense to say no. He says after she learned more of what Father R was doing in the schools, she reported it to the church. She didn't for once, you know, have any kind of blind obedience to, oh, this is a priest, there can't be anything wrong. She immediately thought, you know, why is my son asking me what to do? when a girl says stop, why is this priest coming to my house? He says his mom was told to keep quiet and was shunned from the church. But she should have been received as a hero, you know, coming to help these people. Um, but instead, it was just deny, deny, deny. He says he has had a number of former classmates reach out to him. One person who wishes to remain anonymous said, I was called over to the rectory three times during recess and he had me take my shirt off, but he never touched me. I remember him holding my legs as I did sit-ups. Kearney emailed the diocese asking for more information about Father R. They responded that they were not able to positively ID him, but the diocese said if it did get his name, it would report his name to the police. Kearney says he gave the full name to the church five days ago. LPD confirmed that no report has been filed with them. The church said in a statement that the diocese did receive Kearney's information. They said the diocese and our conduct and ministry office investigated these reports and were not able to substantiate the claims. All he wants is a simple apology for his mother. You came to us and said, hey, these kids are not being protected and we shunned you. We should have thanked you. And The miracle of that is something to behold. The miracle of seeing a change inside the Jasper County Jail because of a worship service. John Hill is the pastor of First Church in Wheatfield. Our church was really excited just to um, build bridges with these families and help them connect with our community and help them with employment and just show them that we care. The church comes into the jail once a week to hold a worship service. Anthony Gann has been in the jail since March. He feels the positive impact of the message. It's just awesome to be able to have that, that real church experience while we're, you know, in here doing our time. They started a few months ago, but they've already seen a difference. The corrections officers have talked about how the entire culture of the jail has shifted. The inmates are caring for one another and actually thinking about life beyond bars. Sheriff Patrick Williamson also sees it. They get along well, they treat staff better, so we have less incident. Um, you know, it just complements the other things that we have going on in our jail. Another program happening here at the Jasper County Jail is this garden. The inmates grow the vegetables and then some of the produce goes to community members in need. They also have an in-house psychologist to address mental health issues and resources for the female inmates to learn family care skills. The ultimate goal is to have them contribute to their families, which will contribute to society which will take away the third and fourth generations I'm seeing coming back through our jails. And I think we live in a society that's so quick to condemn people, but Jesus was so quick to give people second chances. And a second chance is all they're asking for. We don't give up on us. Just because we wear these clothes, you know what I mean? Don't mean we're bad people. We just, you know, made some dumb decisions. Anna Darling, News 18.